This is the dedicated guide for mastering Horizon on Apex Legends. With each of the abilities, we're going to break things down for those that are newer to the game and then quickly ramp up to advanced tips. This video is going to be a bit longer, unfortunately, but to help save time, I'm going to timestamp everything with the following topics. we will start at the beginning. One thing that has made me a fantastic Horizon was my dedication to Watson. When I have that itch on Watson of feeling stuck or needing to push, I know that is the best moment to pop Horizon's tactical to get me out of dodge. I've also said with Watson you need to have a better understanding of movement, such as wall bouncing, being able to tap strafe, bunny hop, and with that, because of Horizon's passive ability, this has made me a infinitely better Horizon. I have gotten lots of playtime in Horizon and ranked, and currently on pace to have three accounts to masters using Horizon. I currently have two out of the three done. The other one is Diamond 2, close to Diamond 1. Now, let's deep dive into the quick details of Horizon's tactical ability. Her tactical ability lifts players to a maximum of 30 meters off the ground, with her gravity lift staying active for 10 seconds. The cooldown starts after 10 seconds. If the gravity lift is immediately activated, the cooldown starts when the ability ends. Players will automatically be kicked out of her tactical ability once they reach the top after 2 seconds. Then the cooldown is a total of 20 seconds. Now, let's segue and talk about Horizon's gravity lift and movement. Now, in this portion, we're going to discuss gravity lift and movement. I realize when we're talking about strength and weaknesses, we might double up on this topic, but it's definitely very, very important. So what you need to do whenever you fly up, you got to feel out the center piece of it by zigzagging left and right. And I'll showcase the footage that I record a little later from that POV, what that looks like. If you go a little bit too far back or too far forward, you will accidentally shoot yourself out of the gravity lift a little bit early. This just comes with practice and feeling out how to move within the gravity lift. And of course, when you're at the very tippy top, remember that it takes two seconds when you're at the very tippy top before it shoots you out. So you kind of have to feel out that timing. Wait, one, two, and then it should fire you off. And there we go, fires you off, setting forward. What you can do, which is the biggest thing in terms of movement, will highlight also healing in just a moment. But remember, you can pretty much get two full mags off while you're in this gravity lift, depending on when you decide to start shooting. So once you start shooting, you fly off, you reset, you go right back to the gravity lift and start doing a little bit more damage. That gives you two full mags of opportunities before the lift actually disappears. So you can do two things within two lifts. You can go up and start shooting, and if you got absolutely destroyed, you can decide to go right back up and zigzag and heal, and we'll showcase the healing later on and also in this video. But it has the movement that is vital to succeeding as a horizon when using the lift. Use it to your maximum ability, and then we'll talk about the strength and weaknesses a little later in the video, and I'll timestamp that and also recover some of the high level topic here and showcase it for you guys. Now, in this portion, we're going to talk about horizon's gravity lift and healing. So let's say an opponent is shooting at you, so go ahead and fire at me, Sarah. And once you get shot, you take your lift up and keep trying to fire at me. You use the gravity lift to move around. And you do that same movement that we talked about, flying back, and keep trying to shoot at me. And you can sell and buy yourself so much time while healing. This can be a great resource to use while you're trying to get away. And whenever you're trying to reposition. So let's say you're being chased and you're, you know, let's say you're sliding away. And going to just try to try to kill me, Sarah, and just try to eliminate me. So if I'm being chased and being shot at, you know, we'll talk about the passive moving around, and then you heal and you fly up in the air and you zigzag, you're making it as difficult for your opponent as possible while still getting a lot of ground. This is much more effective and better than sitting on the ground, pretty much doing doing nothing and standing in place. I mean, you can bunny hop away a little bit more effectively as Horizon, but of course that downside that you're going to experience is that having that gravity lift is going to be just much more effective to getting away and getting that extra boost. The biggest thing is having the boost when you fly away. So go ahead and keep shooting at me here. So having that boost flying up in the air and gaining that ground and distance and using the momentum from the passive to move yourself forward and then boom, you are further away from your opponent. Granted, yes, they can take the gravity lift to continue to chase you, but that means that they have to be just as knowledgeable on Horizon to be able to master that, to be able to chase you. But again, you covered some ground, you might be back where your team is at and you have a better position around cover, especially if you use that boost to get you a little forward. So that is the beauty with using Horizon and having mobility to keep you mobile while healing. Now, in this portion of the video, we're going to talk about Horizon's tactical ability and what it counters. Let's start with a simple. We're going to go line by line and row by row. And also, we have Sarah here who is helping me. Say hi, Sarah. Hi. Epic intro. I like it. So let's talk about Bloodhound first. Bloodhound, what they really have is their scan. So there's not much with a tactical that they really counter. 
So Sarah, if you'll load up as Gibraltar, we're going to showcase how the bubble interacts with her tactical. So I'm going to throw it on the tactical. I'm going to throw it on the bubble in it. What? And there it is. It flies up right through it. That reaction is the exact reaction if you have it. Let's say you're placing her, tact her tactical through a doorway and you're trying to stop a Gibraltar push. That's also a great way to kind of stop the bubble push if it's nearby or if you know a Gibby is trying to push through. So great tip there. Also, if we're going to grab her, his ultimate for Gibraltar, Sarah, she's going to grab Gibraltar's ultimate. And we're going to showcase how you counter with the gravity lift. So what you need to do is you can queue up. But the thing is, biggest thing is that you can still be hit by the ultimate ability if the ultimate still hits you mid-air. But you will be able to further dodge it as you kind of sidestep step left and right. So it's a great way to counteract it just as long as you don't actually physically run into the projectile while it is in the air. Now let's segue to lifeline next. Let's talk about lifeline a bit. Goodbye, little one. Goodbye. So I guess if you don't like lifelines, you want the drone to fly away, then you guess you can use the tactical ability to push it away. Now her ultimate ability though does come shattering down so that one doesn't counter, so nothing to worry about there. Okay, let's put down a zip. I'm going to put my Q down, going to fly through. And it bur bursts right through it. So th the Horizon Tactical does not counter Pathfinder. So nothing to worry about there. Now for Wraith, in terms of the synergy with her tactical, can be used to push up to height, especially with her ultimate. So let's go ahead and highlight that real quick. So what you can do, let's say if or Wraith needs to go up on height here. So she can go in and pop her ultimate. I can pop a Q to get her up there and save a lot of time. And there's the port. If you want to, you can definitely take that. It's just an alternative way just to get her further up before she drops her portal. We showcase it kind of falling short, but she could keep on running. It saves her time instead of just having to climb through everything or just in case that she's being fired at, just having the extra mobility while in the air. So it's pretty good synergy with Wraith. Now let's switch over to Bangalore. There's two things in terms of Bangalore with attack ability when it comes to Horizon. So the first one will be the Bangalore Smokes, and then we're going to highlight the ultimate ability. This is the best way also to counter her ultimate when using Horizon. So I'm going to throw down her ultimate against me here. So what you can do as the airstrike comes in, let's say you're on a building on height, but you don't want to go inside and you want to counteract pressure. You throw up the Q just in time and you're going to completely dodge all the damage that comes in from Bangalore. I've done this so many times in ranked. A lot of people are playing Bangalore for the various reasons because of smoke. And let's highlight, let's showcase whenever you throw smoke into her tactical, what that looks like. Going to throw another and it shoots up right into the air. Any big projectile will be shot into the air. That happens also with Maggie's tactical ability as well, which we'll cover in just a moment. That happens with Caustic, so let's go ahead and highlight and showcase what happens with Caustic. I'll put down the gravity lift. I want you all to see what happens in the gravity lift when the ultimate will fly up a little further up in the air. Use this, you can use this against or for you, depending which way you want to think about it. Can help kind of propel it a little further. Surprise attack, going to throw a barrel into that little lift. Goodbye barrel. Surprise attack or to counter. You make the decision on that. But just having that knowledge is great to know because Horizons Tactical has a lot of strengths and counters to a ton of legends. And this is what really makes her big brain and can make her a lot of fun. Now Mirage, switch over to Mirage. The biggest thing is seeing the duplicates run through. So will you do the ultimate ability just to kind of highlight that? That'll be pretty funny to see. All right, dupes o'clock, bring all of them out to play. And there's like a million of them when they fly out they do the same exact thing. Look at that. It's like a little firework. So it's a lot of fun. So if you want to really dupe somebody and your whole team is nearby and you see like five of them just shoot out like a firecracker, it's a great way to kind of dupe them. Now Octane, I want to showcase the Horizon Tactical with the jump pad. You can use this also in terms of getting you a little bit further across, but I'm going to showcase what happens when you throw the jump pad right on the gravity lift. I'm going to throw that jump pad right in. We But if you want, you can definitely use it to fly onto it. You won't get as much air because it's better to slide jump into it, but 
you can use your imagination how you can build some synergy with Horizon and Octane. Up next is Watson. Watson, it really is a counter across the board to poor old Horizon. Just want to highlight what happens when you throw it against an enemy pylon. We're on the same squad still. Enemy, there you go. That works. Perfect. It counters it. We're running into a bug earlier where it was not countering it, and I was literally screaming at the top of my lungs. I might add that in here. Sarah, what's happening? Why yeah, did I throw both here. of it? <laughs> Why did? <laughs> Why didn't it work? What the f wrong with a pylon? <laughs> Crypto, let's highlight a, a showcase what happens with the gravity cannon with the drone passing through. Wee! <laughs> Goodbye, drone! Just in case, it's a, it's a great counter if they're using their ultimate ability and you're trying to get away and you're trying to screw them up. It's definitely a good way to counter if you can time it, but it's pretty fun. Revenant Silence also gets shot up in the air. Go ahead and throw down my little gravity. Don't throw it at me! Wee! <laughs> There it goes. This is like just a firework demonstration at this point. There's just, it's just constant Wii moments. Wii. Now for Rampart, it's really used for her ultimate ability just to get her height. So if Rampart is using her ultimate, she can use a gravity lift to just start laying down fire. All right, Sarah, have fun. Thank God she didn't eliminate me. I would have been crying. Who becomes the more dominant mommy? I'm gonna throw down mine. They are equally dominant. It does not fling the other one up in the air. Old Fusey's gonna have a ball with Horizon's tactical. So pretty much every grenade that you throw into this is also gonna bounce off, even though his projectile speed is a little bit faster. So I'm gonna throw down a tactical so you see it. They fire off, they completely go off their normal distance. It screws it all up of whatever they're aiming, but it definitely lobs it in a unique direction. It's pretty fun. It goes for his pass or his tactical, any grenades that you do have, even throwing just a regular grenade into it, but just good to highlight it. Next is Valkyrie. Definitely a good way to kind of throw off Valkyries who are very pesky, especially when they're trying to fly away, or if you're trying to give them a the little bit of that boost. So if I throw this down while they're in it, it can help them or it can throw them off and disorient them. It depends on how good that Valkyrie is, because most of them will probably use it to their advantage. But it definitely throws them off if they're already in the air and they get super confused. I've seen that happen for those that are less experienced on Valkyrie. Now let's highlight what happens when you throw his ultimate into a tactical. Where the heck did it go? There it is. Definitely flings in a weird direction. So there's that opportunity. to, If you are with a Seer, throwing it in there is not a bad idea, because it definitely throws off the opponent where it's going to appear. But it's always ideal to put a Seer ultimate in a non open area like that and of course we discuss ash when you're ash and you're definitely in the air you can still use her ultimate and we'll also highlight what happens with her passive as it flies through so let's go to highlight that real quick so let's throw down that let's throw down her tactical and it goes we the problem with her tactical is that it just fires right up into the air and then we're going to highlight when you're up in the air using her ultimate teleport us i gotta go right back up Wee. So a great way to give yourself some height and ability to kind of get a, get a new direction and kind of get out of dodge. Great synergy together. And of course, last but not least is Mad Maggie. Let's start with the tactile. I don't know where the tactical went, but I know <laughs> see where the ultimate went. The tactical just completely fired off in the air. So as we wrap up, that is every legend in terms of synergy and what you can do with each other. The reason I'm highlighting it is that knowledge is power. When you have all this knowledge and know what her tactical ability can do, it is probably the most diverse tactical ability and the most fun and most interesting one in the game. Just because it has pretty much a counter to just about every legend and it really disrupts the flow of a fight and makes things a lot more interesting. So let's segue to the next topic. Now in this portion, what we're gonna discuss are the strengths and weaknesses of the gravity lift. Ideally, whenever you're going up, someone have Sarah go ahead and fly up in the air and she's not going to zigzag. 
this is probably the easiest way to fire off against a horizon. So she's going to switch legends again and highlight the strafe going left and right. And then I'm going to highlight from my point of view what that looks like. So the strength is whenever you're going up. So go ahead and fire yourself up. Is moving left and right makes it way more difficult with the zigzag pattern to hit rather than the straight line. So that is the strength of going up. Now let's talk about the downside to this. If you're going up, it is much easier to laser an opponent going up in a straight line. But realize the weakness of doing that means that you are much easier as a target to hit. Now, when you're at the very tippy top, it's still good to keep the strafe going left and right. So let's showcase the left and right and what that movement looks like real quick. So if you're going up and down, I'm going to shoot the target dummy. It makes it a little bit more difficult to land every single shot. And this is an exercise that you need to practice. And we'll showcase how to practice this in just a moment. So if Sarah's moving around in front of me, I'll go ahead and turn off the friendly fire and switch back and forth just to get the tactical back. We'll fly up in the air. But hitting a target that is also strafing in front of you can be very, very difficult to hit. Not impossible, but just using this as an example purpose. So the question is, when you're going up into the fight, do you have the upper hand, one, when taking the gravity of lift to surprise your opponent, to eliminate them by going up in a straight line? If you don't, you're going to need to zigzag left and right to ensure that you don't get beamed out of the sky. Now, another weakness is when you're at the very tippy top of your gravity lift. So when you're at the very tippy top, go ahead and fly it for me, Sarah. And then you decide to fly out at a straight line. So I'm going to shoot forward. And it'll shoot you forward. This is the absolute weakness of her tactical. At that point, you are your absolute weakness when using that gravity lift. So let's go ahead and highlight that from my point of view and how you counteract it. So if you're up in the air, let's just showcase the weakness. Because you take a moment and you pause. And when you pause for a moment, this is the weakest part that you have as a horizon. So what can you do in this scenario? Well, what you can do is you kind of curve it. And you kind of if you can really strafe away. So when you're in the air, and this helps you set up for the next horizon lift is that you you try to curve as you come down, you'll be ready to go right back into the lift. That's the best option that you have rather than going into a straight line like you're seeing there. Remember that it does shoot you out after two seconds, but you need to curve as much as you can, spamming the forward input, trying to treat it like a tap straight, but the sharper the angle that you curve, the, mo the more difficult it is going to be to hit you. So Sarah, if you will, can you show showcase that from your POV? compared just to the straight line, she's gonna do a big curve, which makes it a little bit more difficult. So remember, you can arc it a little bit more, you can spin it a bit more, but it does make you, if they're trying to track having the directional shift, it's going to throw them off a little bit. So just try to anticipate how you're going to throw them off. So I'm gonna showcase what it looks like now from Sarah's POV. She's gonna send me that footage and I'm gonna put it, and I'm gonna put it here. So when you're, when you're going up, sees us going up, and then what that arc looks like whenever we're going right back in. Let's discuss when to use Horizon's gravity lift. Number one is creating an opening for damage. If you know the opponent is locked down or in an open field, you have the opportunity to take immediate height. The immediate height is using Horizon's gravity lift. It's a great way to create opening damage and reset to heal while you're on the lift to pull away or push forward to secure the elimination. Number two, it's great when retreating. Used to heal while in the air like we've covered before, but it has that ability to create space and also make you harder to hit while you're trying to heal and reset. Number three, taking immediate height as a team, getting optimal positioning. Number four, whenever you're rotating, you're rotating, you need a little bit more variety to make it more difficult for you to hit, it's great to utilize to help specifically when all three of you are taking the lift at once it definitely makes it very overwhelming for the enemy team to eliminate you and of course number five last but not least can be used for scouting for s surveying the land checking out if there's an enemy team nearby great way for identifying in your own way if enemies are in the area or if they're running or what the enemy team is doing now, the honest best way to practice as a horizon is constantly taking your tactical ability and flying up in the air and going in game and shooting the target dummies. Unfortunately, there's not many aim trainers that are going to train you otherwise, but at least the beauty is that we have some targets moving around even just a little bit to kind of help you improve. So use the gun that you feel the least comfortable with, whether it's an 
R301, a flat line, even single shot weapons, maybe using a sniper while you're going up. Whatever that weapon is, load out with that weapon and just constantly take the gravity lift up and just start taking shots. You'll get used to the pressure and the timing of going up and navigating back into the lift constantly. I see a lot of Horizons make this mistake by not maximizing on their gravity lift enough. But if you're flying up in the air and taking shots at the opponent, it's the best way to practice because sometimes they move, sometimes they don't. And the same thing happens with enemy targets. Sometimes they're going to move and sometimes they're going to stand still. If you have a friend, then of course you can use gravity lift to fight against them. If they'll let you. So if you happen to have friends, happen to have a friend here right now, but other, t other times you may not have a friend. And you may be crying to yourself and you have the target dummies. Zigzag as you're going up, practice the pattern in just a straight line. I definitely recommend zigzagging it. If you can master the zigzag going up and down using different various weaponry, then you're going to really succeed as a horizon because you're so used to that movement. Use guns that feel even uncomfortable, whether it's a sniper and you're flying up. Trust me, that entry damage, especially when they're trying to get a shot at you, is extremely vital to helping you succeed to becoming a better horizon. So let's say with a 6x sniper, you're flying up, taking those shots. Get used to that mouse space, because especially with a higher magnification, is going to be much, much slower. All right, let's segue to the next topic. Now, in this portion of the video, we're going to talk about Horizon's passive and the benefits that it does have. The biggest benefit is being able to drop and use your passive to really propel you to various areas. That big push that you get, especially when you're landing, is a definite benefit to helping you garner some ground. You can use that, especially whenever you're landing off drop you're flying from a Valkyrie, when you're flying from height, but the extra benefit as well helps you get right into the fight. So here's an example, you still have the weapon out. You don't have to go through the extra animation once you land. You don't have to hit the zip at the very end, you can get right into an encounter. So if you're doing a drop on, on a, an opponent, then you have that added value. Horizon also has that added benefit of being able to bunny hop more effectively than other legends. You'll see this is a pretty strong bunny hop and it does propel you forward. I think the max velocity C is around 340. But whenever you're horizon and bunny hopping, I'm going to remove the pistol here. You'll see that it spikes just a little bit higher. <clears throat> when you have horizon, you're bunny hopping though. You'll see that the directional change that you have is a lot more fluid. You'll see though, whenever you're bunny hopping as Horizon, the directional movement that you have is a lot more fluid than a legend that doesn't have that directional shift. It's very minor, but if you are a master of your movement, there is that extra mobility and keeping up momentum. You'll see that this is just a little bit slower, a little bit heavier, and you'll see that Horizons is just all that lighter. You'll see that they're a lot more fluid, able to dodge more shots. This goes for the bunny hopping as well. See the bunny hopping has a bit more of a propel. Now if you switch over to, let's say, Watson. What you're going to see is that bunny hopping can be fluid, but it's not as fun and bouncy as, let's say, Horizon. Now the other added value with playing Horizon is how sharp your turns can feel, especially when you're making shifts in direction. Her mobility overall will give you a lot more fluidity if you lack it, especially when you're trying to learn new movement tech. I personally believe that playing Horizon when understanding movement tech is much easier to do compared to other legends. If you do the same movement on Watson, while it is still effective, you lose some of that sharp turns and fluidity that you see even as you bounce around. It's not as as crisp to be able to do. While it is there and it is there present, as you can tell even as I try to bunny hop and try to curve, just trying to highlight the curve that you make, especially with the passive, it just is not as present and free flowing to give you that mobility. So it makes your tap strafes a lot sharper, the movement that you make a lot more fun especially when you're trying to get out of dodge and you're trying to make a play and a lot more forgiving. Essentially, that's why I said if you can master Watson using movement, then Horizon is going to be 
extremely easy to do in terms of mobility and movement just because it's that much more forgiving and also a lot sharper so that's pretty much what you would see because you can still do the same movement as we highlight here but you kind of lose a bit of that air time and a little bit of that sharpness and that beauty that you get as a as a horizon you can still tap strafe you can still do sharp corners I have full guides and tutorials on this, how to do a tap strafe, how to do a wall bounce. The highlight, the thing I'm highlighting here is just a difference in terms of movement. I know for those that are watching who are casual are probably looking at this and saying, that doesn't seem like it's that big of a difference. And it really isn't, but the, the difference really comes in whenever you're trying to dodge that extra bullet and trying to make yourself just slightly more difficult of a target to hit. And whenever you do that, well, you're going to be infinitely better for it and you're going to see the benefit from it. It's like claiming that a tap strafe at a 90 degree angle isn't beneficial, especially when you're cutting an angle. It doesn't seem like it is at first, but that added momentum and buildup does go a long way over the course of a fight and engagement. So you make sharper angle, sharper fights, and when you're on horizon, this movement just is overall a lot more fluid and forgiving, especially when you're cutting an angle, you have that sharpness to it. And that really encompasses her passive. Try to just get creative whenever you're bouncing out from height off of various objects, use it to your advantage and practice your mobility on horizon. I promise you, if you don't have good movement, if you do it enough on horizon and the test range, over time, you will. And it'll make it that much easier for you to master. All right, let's segue to the next topic. Now let's discuss Horizon's ultimate ability and break it down. This is a three minute cooldown and definitely has weaknesses more than its strengths at times. It's all about timing though. When you get the timing, that's when you have the strength of the ultimate. When it's thrown, it lasts 12 seconds, but Nuti unfortunately only has 175 HP and can be destroyed. It takes two seconds to activate once landed. And enemies are highlighted if their position is behind Nuti, just so you can see them. This pulls enemies from behind obstacles such as walls and doors. You can also use it when you throw it near a door or near a wall, it also pulls them in. This is countered by Watson's ultimate and can be used to destroy doors. Its major weakness is how quickly, again, it can be taken out. With only around 11 bullets from a flatline, it eliminates it pretty quickly. Most forget also how low its HP is, and a team fires it quickly, it can be destroyed even before it deploys. So realistically, when do you use it? Well, that comes from pull away from cover if a team is behind a box. While you push in using a gravity lift, this is because it forces them to shift focus on Nuti compared to you as you're flying in. It can be combined with other ultimates such as Caustic's ult, Fuse's ultimate ability, grenades, or Revenant Silence. Movement legends have the best out to getting out of this, unfortunately. Horizon's gravity lift is a good counter to her own self. Rafe's tactical, Loba's tactical are just a few examples. If a team is rotating late from zone, this is a great way to slow them down also because every second pushing in is wasted even shooting her ultimate, so it's a good way to slow them down. Slow down somebody chasing you, and also because this blocks audio because of how loud it is. The goal of it is to really think of a way to slow down your opponent, break a door, or clump opponents up if they don't eliminate your ultimate. Use it at least once in a fight for those specific scenarios that I highlighted. The problem most horizons have is they forget to use it. Also, be sure when you're throwing it that it does hit the back of your own teammates. I wish that they would make this adjustment with her because sometimes it gets caught up in weird things. And especially when you hit an enemy, it kind of bounces off them. I think the beauty would be if it just went through opponents and teammates to make sure wherever you threw it, it landed. But that's just my own personal thoughts on her ultimate ability. It definitely has already has its weaknesses. Remember, again, this affects your own teammates, so be careful as well. If you're trying to slow the opponent or trying to slow down a fight, it's also going to slow down your teammates as well. It can be very frustrating when a horizon throws at a door, but you all want to breach that door. So be mindful of when you're actually going to use it and communicate it. So let's discuss who is best in horizon. This is going to be aggro players, in-game leads, those that are making the plays, entry fraggers, Players with good mobility, because she is truly the mobility legend. Players who understand the value of high ground. Those who can understand the chaos of a fight and kind of love to get into the mix of it. Great aimers in a variety of situations, so understanding full 360 control. And also who have good situational awareness. Now let's wrap up and talk about Horizon and the meta. To wrap things up, Horizon is truly the mobility legend of Apex Legends. She started off stronger than she currently is. She got hit hard by that one nerf in the earlier seasons, but since then she did get buffed. Her mobility is always a key focus and I currently struggle with her passive 
and the discussion around if she has been shadow nerfed or not. It definitely does not feel as sharp, but this could be also due to the servers. I know death slides are more frequent because of the server lag. She is a legend that in the right hands can be the best in the game. In the wrong hands, she pretty much has close to no effect at all. But after watching this guide, I hope it really pushes players to understand how to master Horizon. But at least now, of course, as people watch this guy, they're going to know how to counter her. And how, if somebody knows how to counter them, how you can change things up to continue to master Horizon. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Try to put everything as detailed as possible in this guide. I really appreciate all of you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys all 